So I know there's a lot of people who are new to this who may not understand this and are still a little bit confused. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to step through this code here line by line just to recap and go over it again. Here we have our first line and we see first of all the keyword const. This is a qualifier which means that this variable cannot be changed. So this keyword or qualifier locks in this byte, which is just a data type. So it cannot be changed, makes it read only because anything up here has global scope. And again, we will talk about scope later. Now, we already confirmed that it's not a great idea to hard code numbers. So I could have taken, instead of this, I could have written a number five in here. But a better practice is to just make pin numbers and things like that variables and give them meaningful names. That way, if this program were to grow to several hundred lines of code, and for some reason I decided to change the pin number, I would only have to change it in one spot versus sifting through hundreds of lines of code, possibly making mistakes and missing things. So this is just good practice to not hard code numbers. And then again, the constant qualifier makes this read only. So this cannot be changed by any other function anywhere else in the program, even if we had a thousand lines of code and 50 different functions we wrote, this number would not be able to be changed by any of them. Moving on, we get into setup. And we wanted to print things to the serial monitor, so of course we need to initialize the serial monitor. And that's what this line does. We are using the serial library and the begin function, and we are setting the baud rate, that's what this number is, the baud rate is just bits per second. We're setting that at 9600. And that's really all we need to do there. Now we get into loop. Again, we see the serial library, and this time we want to print something to the serial monitor. And we want to do so on a new line. That's what the LN does. And right away, we see our function that we wrote. This is a function call. And once we reach this point, the program jumps down here, and here's our function. And it gives this function LDR pin, the pin number, which we saw was 5. And... It takes a reading. This integer here is just the number that it gets from the analog read from the light sensor that's connected to pin 5. The analog read is another function built in that reads the ADC. And we get a number from 0 to 1023. And we return it to the caller. So we return this number, whatever it is, from 0 to 1023, whatever pin 5 is seen based on the voltage across the light dependent resistor and the resistance across it, which of course varies the voltage. It returns this back to the serial monitor and then it prints that value out. Then we get into this if statement and right away we call the function again. And this line of code is a comparison statement. And we're just asking simply the question, if whatever light level returns is greater than a thousand, then we're gonna print it's dark in here. So whatever value this returns, it's going to be a value again from 0 to 1,023. It's going to call the function. It's going to read the sensor, return it back over here. And if that number is greater than 1,000, we're going to print it's dark in here. If it's not, then we're going to print I can see the light. And we're going to have a one-second delay because delay works in milliseconds. So we have time to actually see the values that are being printed out. And then, of course, we have our function definition, which starts with all these comments, which is good practice, outside of loop and outside of setup. I told you earlier that we had to, speaking of function definitions, keep them outside of loop and also outside of setup. So let's, let's just try and see what happens if we don't. I'm just going to leave the comments alone. And let's just say I get silly, I make a silly mistake, and I stick the function definition here in setup. And then I try to compile it. Here we can see I have an error, and it says a function definition is not allowed here. That's not going to work. And similarly, if I try to put it inside of loop, we're going to get a similar error. And here we can see, indeed, we have an error. Now, I could, if I wanted to stick it up here, I could. This is outside, technically, of setup and loop. And I'm just going to paste it in there and compile it. And we can see that works. I could also take it and stick it in between setup and loop. And it works. But usually, most of the time, 
people just put the functions they write after loop at the end. So either one of those three will work though. So that's it. That concludes this lesson on functions. Meanwhile, guys, until next time, go out there, make something, have fun, try it for yourself, try to write your own functions, and I will see you soon.